The strengths and weaknesses of Namibia. Welcome to this blog and thanks for watching. In this video we shall be taking you to the southern part of Africa and we shall be looking at the strengths and weaknesses of the beautiful country of Namibia. Namibia is a country with its western border as the Atlantic Ocean. It shares land borders with Zambia, Angola, Botswana and South Africa to the south and east. And although it does not border Zimbabwe, less than 200 meters of the Zambezi River separates the two countries. We have several videos on Namibia such as the 10 things you didn't know about Namibia, 10 best places to visit in Namibia, and 5 reasons why you absolutely need to visit Namibia. Click on the cards on your screen to check it out after this one. Namibia is a unique country with strengths and weaknesses, and in this video we will explore both in order to make valid judgments on the country. The strengths of the African nation Namibia are the internal aspects of the country, either natural or man-made, which helps or fosters the country's growth and progress. The weaknesses on the other hand are the internal aspects that hinder the country's improvement and are strikes which make a nation less attractive to investors, foreigners and most importantly its citizens. If you are new here, welcome. Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any of our videos. Now let's begin this video on a positive note. The strengths of Namibia. Number 1. Tourism Potential Tourism is a major contributor to Namibia's GDP creating tens of thousands of jobs as 18.2% are employed directly or indirectly and servicing over a million tourists per year. The country is a prime destination in Africa and is known for ecotourism, which features Namibia's extensive wildlife. There are many lodges and reserves to accommodate ecotourists. Sport and trophy hunting is also a large and growing component of the Namibian economy, accounting for 14% of total tourism in the year of 2000 or 19.6 million US dollars, with Namibia boasting numerous species sought after by international sport hunters. In addition, extreme sports such as sandboarding and skydiving have become popular, and many cities have companies that provide tours. The most visited places include the capital of Winhoek, Caprivi Strip, Fish River Canyon, Sassusvlei, the Skeleton Coast Park, Sesrim, and the coastal towns of Swakopmund, Walvis Bay, and Luderitz. Number 2. Free Education Namibia has free education for both primary, that is grades 1 to 7, and secondary education levels, from grade 8 to 12. However, parents are expected to contribute to the school development fund. It is estimated that there are currently millions of Namibian students in primary and secondary schools, which is a huge expansion from the bare thousands, decades before now. The pupil-teacher ratio in 1999 was estimated at 32 is to 1 with about 8% of the GDP being spent on education, which has greatly improved in recent times due to huge government efforts in improving on the educational system. Curriculum development, educational research and professional development of teachers is centrally organized by the National Institute for Educational Development in Okahanja. Most schools in Namibia are state-run, but there are some private schools which are also part of the country's educational system. There are also teacher training universities, Colleges of Agriculture, Police Training College, and Universities. The main universities are the University of Namibia, International University of Management, and Namibia University of Science and Technology. Number 3. Good Transport Infrastructure Namibia's road infrastructure ranked 28 globally out of the 140 countries assessed in the 2018 Global Competitiveness Report. Over the years, total investment in the road sector have increased Namibian's road network from 42,000 km in 1990 to 48,000 km by 2018. This is due to the continuous investment in the upkeep of road networks in Namibia, which in turn incubates quality road infrastructure. Namibia has again been ranked as having the best road infrastructure in Africa by the World Economic Forum's Quality of Road Infrastructure Report for 2019. And these are representative of what is on ground as the roads infrastructure in the country are in top shape compared to most African countries. According to the report, Namibia led the top countries on the continent, with Egypt placing second, followed by Rwanda, Morocco, Mauritius, and South Africa. Number 4. Namibia has good economic freedom. Namibia's economy climbed back into the moderately free category in 2020 after a two year absence. GDP growth has been moderately good for the past five years, but it dipped in 2018 because of lower government spending and less demand for Namibian exports to South Africa. 
Namibia's economic freedom score is 60.9, making its economy the 96th freest in the 2020 index. Its overall score has increased by 2.2 points due to an increase in the score for fiscal health. Namibia is ranked 7th among 47 countries in the Sub-Saharan Africa region, and its overall score is well above the regional average and slightly below the world average. To address some of the shortcomings in government integrity that have held back economic freedom, the quasi-socialist government plans to try to close leakages in state finances by improving accountability for corruption and waste. This has also improved the country's fiscal health, hence its economic free results for 2020. Weaknesses of Namibia Number 1. Poor Climate Climatically, the range of Namibia's climate is within the subtropical high-pressure belt. Hence, it has its overall climate description as arid, descending from the subhumid through semi-arid, embracing most of the waterless Kalahari, and arid to the hyper-arid coastal plain. Temperature maxima are limited by the overall elevation of the entire region, as only in the far south is there one bad temperature maxima above 40 degrees centigrade. Typically, the subtropical high-pressure belt with frequent clear skies provides more than 300 days of sunshine per year. It is situated at the southern edge of the tropics, the Tropic of Capricorn cuts the country about in half. The winter is generally dry, both rainy seasons occur in summer, the small rainy season between September and November, and the big one between February and April. Humidity is low and average rainfall varies from almost zero in the coastal desert to more than 600 mm in the Caprivi Strip. Rainfall is highly variable and droughts are common. Number 2. Water sources are poor. Namibia is the driest country in sub-Saharan Africa and depends largely on groundwater. With an average rainfall of about 350 mm per year, the highest rainfall occurs in the Caprivi in the north is about 600 mm per annum and decreases in the westerly and southwesterly direction to as little as 50 mm and less per annum at the coast. The only perennial rivers are found on the national borders with South Africa, Angola, Zambia, and the short border with Botswana in the Caprivi. In the interior of the country, surface water is available only in the summer months when rivers are in flood, after exceptional rainfalls. Otherwise, surface water is restricted to a few large storage dams, retaining and damming up these seasonal floods and their runoff. Where people do not live near perennial rivers or make use of the storage dams, they are dependent on groundwater. Isolated communities and those economic activities located far from good surface water sources, such as mining, agriculture and tourism, can be supplied from groundwater over nearly 80% of the country. More than 100,000 boreholes have been drilled in Namibia over the past century, and one third of these boreholes have been drilled dry. This water crisis returns the agricultural sector, as well as the well-being of Namibians. Number 3. Human Rights Issues Homosexual acts are illegal in Namibia and discrimination as well as intolerance against LGBTQ people is still widespread. However, LGBT Namibians face virtually no violence or harassment from the Namibian police, military, or government, and no LGBT Namibians have ever been arrested or charged with sodomy in the last 20 to 25 years. The LGBT may not experience violence, but that is not the case of women in the country. In November 2018, it was reported that 32% of women aged 15 to 49 have experienced violence and domestic abuse from their spouses or partners, and 29.5% of men believe that physical abuse towards their partner is acceptable. On the other hand, the Namibian constitution guarantees the rights, freedoms and equal treatment of women in Namibia and SWAP or the ruling party in Namibia has adopted a zebra system, which ensures a fair balance of both genders in government and equal representation of women in the Namibian government. Namibia is considered one of the most free and democratic countries in Africa, with a government that maintains and protects basic human rights and freedoms. But unfortunately, this has not stopped the actions of men who feel it is acceptable to inflict pain on their partners. Number 4. Dependent on the mining sector and dependent on South Africa Namibia's economy is tied closely to South Africa's due to their shared history. The largest economic sectors are manufacturing which accounts for 13.5% of the country's GDP, closely followed by mining which contributes more than 10% of the GDP, agriculture with 5.0% and tourism. These sectors, as much as they flourish, 
the extraction of minerals seems to be the only sector that is expanding rapidly. The problem with this is the fact that any shocks in this sector will lay the economy many steps back. To carry out total trade, Namibia has to use South African ports and many other aspects. With such a scenario, the South African government partially has influence on the decision-making of Namibia, as any signs of deviations can be met by sanctions or border restrictions. Number 5. Income Disparity Namibia has one of the highest rates of income inequality in the world, due in part to the fact that there is an urban economy and a more rural cashless economy. The inequality figures thus take into account people who do not actually rely on the formal economy for their survival. The data indicates that the current income share held by the highest 10% is approximately 51.8%. This disparity illustrates the large gap between the rich and the poor. An additional figure describes the poverty gap thus. People living at $2 or less in the country are approximately 17.72% of the population. Another cause of the economic gap is high unemployment rates in the country, which poses a problem in any economy, and given that Namibia's economy is tied to that of South Africa, it is no surprise that it has such a huge gap, given South Africa has the same problem. Number 6. Agricultural sector exposed to climatic hazards About half of the population depends on agriculture, largely subsistence agriculture for its livelihood, but Namibia must still import some of its food. Although per capita GDP is five times the per capita GDP of Africa's poorest countries, the majority of Namibia's people live in rural areas and have a subsistent way of life. Although arable land accounts for only 1% of Namibia, nearly half of the population is employed in agriculture. About 4,000, mostly white commercial farmers, own almost half of Namibia's arable land. Fortunately, the government of Germany and the United Kingdom will finance Namibia's land reform process, as Namibia plans to start expropriating land from white farmers to resettle landless black Namibians. There you have it, explorers. Those were the strengths and weaknesses of Namibia. Thanks for watching this video. If you did enjoy, do want to give it a thumbs up, don't forget to subscribe and share with your friends.